still play. Last episode, we enjoyed some traditional Cambodian accommodation before heading out for our fifth day of exploring Cambodia the dirty way round. Amazing scenery, great riding, constantly changing terrain. And all topped off with yet another fancy hotel and a rooftop pool. Sunrise in Batambang for our final day's riding. And our trusty steeds are calling to us. But first, it's time to fill our bellies. Buffet breakfast, breakfast of champions. Nice and cool in the hotel. Ah, very. But the heat awaits for our pack of dirt riding reprobates. I wasn't sure whether to bring my Zack Speed armor and hydration pack, but it has been awesome. It lets the air circulate down your back and front. There's been a fair bit of talk about the best ways to stay cool. Some left all their armor behind. Others said it's safety first and are overheating in their compression suits. For me, the Aussie built Zack Speed setup is the best of both worlds. Batambang is a big town, so there's a bit more slabbing on the roads until we hit the dirt. But that's fine with us. As mentioned in an earlier vid, the tour leaders work in plenty of roads, which give us a chance to cool off and relax. They can customise the route for a group wanting mostly hardcore dirt riding, uh, but you'd need to be exceptionally fit. <laughs> And somehow, I don't think that's us. So, it's the final stretch today as we head for Siem Reap, home of the world famous Angkor Wat temples. So, while it might be our final day of riding, there's still some sightseeing to be done too in later episodes. Plenty of unpredictable water crossings as always, and a few TTR250s go under yet again. A lot of guys open up the airbox on these older style bikes, but man, when bikes are going underwater so often, you can see why the manufacturers tend to restrict the airbox intake and often put snorkels in there. Usually, we could get the bike upright just before too much water got in. Our Cambodian support riders were always great with the kids who gathered round, especially when the drone came out. And I must give a plug for our professional drone operator, Davin Jones from Arise Aerial Imagery. I asked him if I could use his footage and he said, of course, no charge, no obligation. Cheers, mate. This long, muddy section was great fun, but hard work. And talking of drowned bikes, <laughs> guess who finally dunks the WR450F? Yep, there was a rider briefing just before we headed out, but I missed the important message because I was off filming something. Those rice fields off to each side look like they are only a foot deep. Nah. If we ride into there, only the handlebars would be showing. Yeah, just trying to do this speed up. Good practice. Wow. Good body control. Awesome. <laughs> I was about to say the local guys really know how to use their body positioning to balance nicely in this shit most of the time. Body can 
control standing, but if you're not confident, you are much better off sitting and paddling with your feet. The way this guy is up front, whoever it is. But yeah, go feet up, it can go badly. I don't know if I got that on camera, but what a fucking dumb move. I bloody uh, turned around to film Chris, and uh, I think the bike stalled, I lost my balance, and uh, the bike temporarily went under, but I don't think we've drowned it. She started again. Fucking dumb. Fucking <laughs> dumb. Hey, I'm kind of glad I didn't film my fuck up. The bike was actually upside down in the rice paddy for a few seconds before I lifted it up. And then I'm chest deep in water, holding the bike up, thinking, shit, I've got all my camera gear in the backpack, but I can't move. Thankfully, Chris stopped quickly and pulled the bike up. But I suspect I've killed my handy cam as it's wet and stopped working. Dope. Okay, I'm not drowning my bike again. As usual, we have regular stops in the shade to cool off and relax. A few viewers have asked if we got sick, but far as I know, everyone was fine. Every lunch was done on the track by our support team to keep everyone healthy. And the tour guys only choose hotels with good kitchens, so the big free breakfasts were always excellent. We were responsible for our own evening meals though, and the guys usually gave us recommendations for the best places to eat in each town. And amazing value, often you could get a meal for less than three Aussie dollars, or really lash out and spend six bucks and eat like a king. Ah, oh, roads, roads, roads. Here and there we've got to do long slabs of bitumen, but it's still like an enduro cost track sometimes. <laughs> we know we are close to the end of our journey when we get to Tonle Sap Lake, which is seasonally inundated and links up with the famous Mekong River. It's also our last chance for some beach riding, so an impromptu race is organised, and we're off. So while this isn't our last episode, it is our last riding day. And man, what an adventure it's been. Many have asked if I'd recommend a trip to them. All I can say is watch the vids, decide for yourself. It's rough, hot, <laughs> and probably the most fun you can have with your clothes on, in my opinion. And then you get spoiled rotten most nights with accommodation you probably couldn't afford back home. But whether this trip will be your cup of tea, nah, I'll leave it to you. And talking of posh hotels, another nice one in Siem Reap to finish our riding, along with another classy pool for the post-ride beers. So hang around guys, and next episode we'll visit the famous Angkor Wat. So there won't be any riding, but man it would be perfect for an extreme enduro course. <laughs> <laughs>